Welcome to the video for Lesson 1-5, Divide Fractions by Fractions. Once again, before proceeding with this video, please read through the lesson on pages 37 through 40 in your textbook. That remember that includes all three examples. Just a quick reminder that in each problem, first, please make sure that every number is written in fraction form. So put one under whole numbers and change mixed numbers to improper fractions. Then change your divide to times, flip your second fraction over, and multiply straight across. Before you proceed with the examples in the book, you might want a piece of scratch paper because some of them just take up a lot of room. Let's begin with the problems uh, 14 through 17 on page 41. Here we are dividing a fraction by a fraction. So step one of making sure each number is in fraction form is already done. Step two, we need to change our divide to times. Remember, we're going to keep that first fraction the same. So in problem 14, 2 thirds divided by 1 third is going to become 2 thirds times, and then we want the reciprocal of 1 third. That flips and becomes 3 over 1. Next, multiply straight across. So you get 2 times 3, which is 6, and 3 times 1, which is 3, and that simplifies down to the whole number 2. Let's take a look at number 15. In problem 15, we have 1 half divided by 1 16th. Always keep the first fraction. Divide changes to times, and 1 16th becomes 16 over 1. Multiply across, so we're going to do 1 times 16 on the top and 2 times 1 on the bottom. That's going to give me 16 over 2, and that simplifies to the whole number 8. Take a moment and pause the video. Try 16 and 17 on your own, and then restart to check your work. When you solve number 16, 1 fourth divided by 1 12th becomes 1 fourth times 12 over 1. Multiply across and you end up with 12 over 4, which is equal to 3. Number 17, 6 sevenths divided by 3 sevenths becomes 6 sevenths times 7 thirds. Hey, did you notice there's a common factor of 7 in the numerator and denominator? So you end up with 6 over 3. Or, if you hadn't seen that, you would have had 42 over 21. Both of them simplified to the whole number 2. Let's try a few more. So in problem 18, we end up with 5 fourteenths divided by 4 sevenths. So let's start with keeping our first fraction, change divide to times, and flip the second. So we end up with 7 over 4. Now if I'm not careful, I'm going to end up with some pretty large numbers. But in this case, when we have 5 times 7, over 14 times 4. Notice that in the numerator, I have a factor of 7, which happens to be a factor of 14, which is in my denominator. So I could rewrite this as 5 times 7 on top, and 14 is the same as 7 times 2. So I have 7 times 2 times 4. Now I can cross off my common factors of 7, and that leaves me with 5 over 2 times 4, which is 8. So I end up with the final answer of 5 eighths. If I hadn't done that, I would have ended up with 35 over 56, which is a pretty large fraction, but it's not incorrect. Let's try number 19. 5 eighths divided by 1 half. That's the same as 5 eighths. Remember, first fraction stays the same. Change divide to times. Flip the second fraction. 1 half becomes 2 over 1. So I'm going to multiply my tops 5 times 2, and I'm going to multiply my bottoms 8 times 1. Well, 5 times 2 is 10, and 8 times 1 is 8. Both of those have a factor of 2. I can write 10 as 2 times 5, and 8 as 4 times 2. Then I can or cancel my 2's, and I end up with 5 over 4. Leaving your answer as 10 eighths is not incorrect, 
It's just not necessarily good form. Also, wait a minute, that's an improper fraction. I could name that as one and one fourth also. Take a moment and pause the video, try problems 20 and 21, then come back and check your work. In problem 20, if you had not simplified your fraction, you would have had 28 over 36, which is also correct. How about just a few more? So in problem 22, we've got 4 ninths divided by 2 thirds. So remember, we're going to rewrite that as a multiplication. So we're going to take 4 ninths, change divide to times, and flip 2 thirds and make it 3 over 2. Now I'm going to multiply across, so I'm going to have 4 times 3, and on the bottom, 9 times 2. Once again, I want to check and see if I have any common factors. Well, I have a 4 on top, which has a factor of 2 in it, so I could rewrite 4 as 2 times 2. Don't forget your 3, that's a prime number. So instead of 4 times 3, I have 2 times 2 times 3. In my denominator, I had that 9. You know what? It's a multiple of 3. So instead, let's write 9 as 3 times 3. And then we still got r times 2. Now let's check for common factors. Okay, I've got at least one 2 on the top and the bottom. I can't cross out the second 2 because there isn't another one on the bottom to match. But in the numerator, I also have a factor of 3, which has a match on the bottom so I can cross those out. And that leaves me with just a two in the numerator and a three in the denominator. So my final answer is just two thirds. If I had not simplified, I would have ended up with 12 over 18. And 12 over 18 is equivalent to two thirds. Go ahead and try 23 through 25 while your video is paused and then come back and check your work. In problem 23, if you did not notice that 8 and 12 both had a factor of 4, then you would have ended up with 56 over 12, which is equivalent to 14 thirds. Both of them simplify down to the mixed number 4 and 2 thirds. On 24, if you did not recognize that there was a factor of 3 and 5 in both the numerator and denominator, you would have ended up with 15 over 30 which is also equal to 1 half. Now let's take a look at an application problem. Guess what? There's one just like this on your math Excel, so pay attention. It says use structure. How many 1 quarter inch pieces can be cut from a piece of metal that is 5 eighths inch long? Hmm. Well, let's think about what we're starting with. We're starting with a piece of metal that is 5 eighths of an inch long. And then we're going to cut from it 1 quarter inch pieces. Division is technically repeated subtraction. So we could either take 5 eighths and subtract 1 fourth as many times as we can. Or the better way to do that would be to take 5 eighths and divide it by 1 fourth. In other words, how many 1 fourth inch pieces can fit in something that's 5 eighths of an inch long? Well, this is just a division of fractions problem. We leave our first fraction alone, change divide to times, flip the second fraction over, so instead of 1 over 4, let's make it 4 over 1, and then multiply straight across. 5 times 4 is 20, and 8 times 1 is 8. Uh, but wait a minute, I think I can simplify that. 20 and 8, I believe they both have a factor of 4. So to find an equivalent fraction, I need to divide the top and bottom by the same number. So I'm going to divide by 4. I'm going to do the same thing on the top as I do on the bottom. 20 divided by 4, well that's 5. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I have the improper fraction 5 over 2. If I change that to a mixed number, I think my problem will be easier to understand. 2 can go into 5 2 whole times with 1 left over. 
two and a half is the same as having five halves. So if I go back to my question, how many one quarter inch pieces can be cut? The answer is two pieces with one half left over. So two and a half pieces. Remember, you're going to have a problem just like that on your math Excel. At this time, go ahead and go into Pearson Realize and complete the 1-5 math Excel. We've had quite a bit of practice. My guess is probably the biggest thing you need help with at this time is changing mixed numbers to improper fractions. I'm going to help you with that and then I want you to finish solving each problem. So let's take a look at number 20. We have 3 and 5 6. That first mixed number, we keep our denominator 6. And then to find my numerator, you multiply the whole by the bottom. 3 times 6 is 18. And then add the numerator 5. 18 plus 5 is 23. Then we have divided by. Let's take a look at that second fraction, or mixed number. 9 and 5 6. You keep the denominator. 9 and 5 6. Well, that means 9 sets of 6. That's equal to 54, plus the 5 extra from the numerator. 54 plus 5 is 59. Before we go on, let's go ahead and change all whole and mixed numbers to improper fractions. Then I want you to go back and solve each problem. So number 21, 16 becomes 16 over 1. Divided by, instead of 2 and 2 thirds, Let's keep our denominator 3. 2 sets of 3 is 6, plus 2 more makes 8. On problem 22, we have 2 and 5 eighths divided by 13. Our mixed number has a denominator of 8, so so will our improper fraction. 2 sets of 8 is 16, plus 5 more makes 21. Whoops, that doesn't look very good. Let's fix that. Then we're going to divide that by 13. Well, just remember, whole numbers become fractions when you plug a 1 under it. Okay, number 23, 3 and 6 sevenths. Keep the denominator. 3 sets of 7 is 21, plus 6 more makes 27. Divided by 6 and 3 fourths. Keep the denominator 4. 6 sets of 4 is 24, plus 3 makes 27. Okay, number 24, 2 and 1 third. Denominator is 3. 2 sets of 3 is 6, plus 1 more is 7. 1 and 1 third, that's 4 thirds. 1 set of 3 plus 1 more makes 4. Finally, on 25, five, or 3 and 3 fourths, keep your 4. 3 sets of 4 is 12, plus 3 more is 15. 1 and a half, we keep our 2 for the bottom. 1 set of 2 is 2, plus 1 more makes 3. All right, now that that's happened, go ahead and solve each problem while you pause the video, and then come back to check your work. Take a few moments and check each and every problem to see how you did.